All right, it's killing me, but I still haven't opened this little packet. I just clipped the ends together and hung it on the clothesline. It's a nice breezy day, so I'm hoping it'll dry. Probably give it about an hour there, and then I might open it up. But don't worry, I will film that so you guys can see too. And then down here in the beautiful sunshine, they have our other fleeces just sitting on trays, so they're getting sun and wind. And you can see how washing them in the trays got nothing off the tips. So, yeah, not real great. But here is our washed lock by lock. That should be dry in no time. And we can see if it felted. Because definitely the tips came much cleaner on this one. Now, hopefully they don't blow away because there is a really good stiff breeze today. So we're letting all this dry and we will get back to it. All right. I couldn't wait any longer to open the package because I want to get the fleece spread out to dry quicker. So here we go. Let me just move that over a bit. Here is our simmered fleece. Oh my. Oh, that feels super soft. I don't think it felted. Now again, the tips are no cleaner than they were in the baskets, but it, it feels super silky soft. Like, look it. Oh my. Well, I think what I'm going to be doing is getting out my big pans chopping up some more old sheets and doing them in packets. Hold on, let me get my shadow off of this. Here's some of the stuff that was done in the pans and this was the stuff that was simmered. It is so white here. I mean, obviously the tips are a mess, but That's not felted. Holy crap, it's not felted. Wow. Well, I guess I should sometimes trust the experts, eh? That's amazing. All right, I'm going to get that out to dry. Um, in the meantime, I have my hand-washed ones are dry, so we're going to go inside and play with those. All right, so here's our little bit of washed on the soap bar fleece. It's dried already because it's such a gorgeous day outside and you can see it is not felted. It is really nice and clean. There's a little bit of dirt left in the tips but nothing like what we've had in the tips so far. And even this big chunk that we washed, it's actually still a little bit damp but you can see that it's not felted. Amazing, right? Here's another one. No felting there. And look at that crimp. It's so gorgeous. Now one of these I'm pretty sure I felted. Oh. Come here. Fine. You want to be like that? We'll start with you. Nothing there. And it all just pulls right apart. It is not felted in the least. This is the one I think I, yeah, there's a little bit of felting just on the cut end there. But other than that, it's light and fluffy. All right, what I want to do is we're just gonna comb up a little bit of this and do a quick sample spin. So let me grab my mini combs. And 
And we can do a full worsted with this, which is the whole point of keeping it in the lock. Yeah, this definitely felt it just a bit on the cut end, but I'm pretty sure we can comb that out. All right, so. Oh, some of these kids outside is screaming their head off. They're obviously upset about something. It wasn't me, I swear. It wasn't me. Oh, this place is so pretty. All right, there's our first pass. You can see... There's some little tangles there, so we just put them aside, push it up. Now we're going to go down. Now this is going to, like, I can see little naps in this because the fleece is so friggin' fine. I don't even want to guess at the micron on this. It is amazing. Wow. So delicate. I'll have to say this, I definitely love dill. <laughs> and not just the spice or the pickle. I love the sheep too. All right, so here's our second pass. You can see those bits from the tip, the tips. They're stained and some of them broke off and there's some little bits of veggie matter in there. So, we get that out of the fleece. There's what it's looking like. Can you see the little, I don't know if you can see the little nets and noils. There's a couple right there, but we're going to comb those out. There, you can see as soon as I pull that out, we're going to get those out. If I keep going slow and admiring every quarter inch of this fleece, I'm never going to get it done. So let me just speed things up a little bit. Now, remember when you're combing, it seems like you have a lot of waste, but your first pass is going to take out a bunch. You can comb it again and see if you can save some more or you can put it into um, for felting or cart it or any number of things like you don't have to waste your cast offs from combing because combing is basically just getting the best of the best out all right now we're going to do one final pass We're literally just saving the most perfect fibers. I just saw a little nap there, so I'm just going back in to comb it out. Get it caught behind these tines so that it's not breaking free into our perfect fiber. All right. Now, oh, I wish you could feel this. It's so silky. There's one little teeny piece of veggie matter in there. Oh, wow. Okay, so I'm just going to give it a twist. 
Just pull the littlest bit. Twist. Pull the littlest bit. is such a pretty fleece. Can you see the spring in that? Like, look at Gorgeous. My hands are so rough right now. I had a really bad outbreak, so my hands are just a mess and they're sticking to everything. nips on the end there I'll just pull them off and here is the perfect portion of the fiber and this is the little pile of waste from her combing and I don't know if we could save much more of this because it is very nappy but this would be perfect for felting could card that up and this would probably felt like a dream seeing as how it's such a fine fleece all right so let me grab the spindle and we'll just do a quick little test spin with it got started. Whoops. That's what it was trying not to do. Okay. There we go. I'm just using a little top whirl spindle here. This just does not want to draft. There we go. And there's why they call it a drop spindle. It's supposed to be called a hand spindle, but that's why they got the name the drop spindle. Because they drop. Okay, just want to use that as a leader, so I just need to get enough twist into it. Okay, there we go. And we're just going to tie that around the shaft. Now, if it had stayed hooked on the hook, I would have just drawn it down and around and back up again. But because it didn't, I am attempting to tie it onto the shaft. There we go. Slide that up to the top. See how pretty that is? It's very pretty, but it's not terribly well balanced. <laughs> it is just a, a resin whorl with flowers in it. So it's not exactly ideally balanced for spinning, as you can see. But it's so pretty. I could rebalance it, I'm sure, if I tried. Make it a little more usable because it doesn't uh, have much spin time at all. All right, I'll wrap that around the shaft. Now, top whirl spindles are definitely better for getting started with because it's just easier to hook on the hook. But um, I find they don't spin as long as bottom whirl spindles do especially if they're as off balance as this one is but i'm sure i could fix this if i tried <laughs> i 
Mm, this smells like Laura's soap. It's so heavenly. All right. Here we go. Here we are. Oh, got it snagged on my leg. And again. There we go. Almost done. Don't you get stubborn on me, mister. Or Mrs. or whatever you would like to use as your honorific. Whoa! Oh. I think the spindle got really mad I wasn't using the correct honorific. Ma'am? Are you a man? Flying bracelet. Hey, where are you going?
tie our ends together and we can just pop our shaft between those plies bring it up under our whirl and then just do a half hitch onto the hook to hold it in place. So now we need to spin it this way, away from us as opposed to towards us. It's funny, when I'm doing a support spindle, I can flick either way with equal ease. Give me a hand spindle and all of a sudden I'm like, oh, I can't make this go. Now, I over twisted it a bit because when I take that half hitch out, the twist is going to travel into that bit. So... Wow, I was so inconsistent on that. Wow, I'm having a really good spindle day, let me tell you. I guess if it's not a rock or a stick, I can't spin with it anymore. All right. So I'm going to just make a half hitch and just add a little bit of extra twist. There. And we use our body naughty. Just quickly skein it off. Pop it off the shaft. Tie our ends together and we will have the best smelling wool sample in the world. I know mint will keep away mice. I wonder if it'll keep away uh, other pests as well. Hmm. So there we go, our teeny tiny little sample skein of dill. So this was the individually washed with a bar of soap blocks. The yarn feels really clean, very soft. And we were able to get those tips clean or cleaner than any of the other methods we tried. And I'm pretty sure we can save most of this too. All right, so there's sample one. We've got two more to play with yet. So I'll be back when those yarns are dry and we can do some sample spins with those. All right, our fleece is all dried up. So this is just washed in the trays. And this is the part that we simmered on the stove. So I'm curious about this. We're going to start with this and see how it works out. Bobo's nuzzling the camera as usual. All right, so there's our wool. Just going to grab my mini combs. These are my Luet double row mini combs. Now you can see the tips are extremely dirty and I expect some of them to break off. Let's see. Oh, nope, they're tougher than I thought. Sometimes when you have this much buildup on the tips, the ends will be brittle and break off. 
but these ones seem to be okay. All right. Now just remember you don't want to overfill your combs because while right now it only looks like we filled it about halfway, that's probably actually a little too much, but we'll work with it. Once we start combing this, it's going to poof up and we won't be able to hold it all on the combs if we put too much on. So let's give this a comb and see what happens. I grabbed too much there. I'm horrible for taking too big a bite when I first start. You just want to grab those tips. So there's our first scraps. There's a little bit of debris in there, but nothing too much. Now we're going to go back the other way. Oop, grabbed a little too much. I forgot to loosen up on the backs of the combs. So just push up with your thumb, kind of rearrange it just to loosen that up a bit. So then it'll actually come off the combs. Otherwise, you're just ripping the fiber trying to get it off the comb because it's jammed on there so tight. I've got Carry On My Wayward Son stuck in my head. The Supernatural Convention is four weeks away. I'm getting excited. I'm going to get pictures with all the guys. I get Jensen and Jared and Misha and Al Alex Calvert's going to be there. So I get to do like Misha and Alex pictures. <laughs> I'm excited. All right, there's our second pass. So we're starting to get all those tips out. And you can see this didn't break but it did pull out because the tip is so tangled and dirty all right let's do our next pass oops loosen up our fiber on the back again don't comb towards yourself do as I say don't do as I do if you're pulling hard and it slips suddenly you could stab yourself But what's life without a little risk, right? I know, I'm ridiculous. All right, third pass. I forgot to loosen it again. This is why you don't do fiber. It's at six o'clock in the morning. Now we're not getting as many neps and noils in this one as we did in the first one. Fiber is turning out beautifully. Now it's discolored by those dirty tips. You can see it's just about clean now. So we'll do one more back and forth. 
loosen up our fibers. Now this time I'm going to take a bite pretty deep. Uh, there's our noils. Can you see those little neppy noils? All right. Now we're going to do our final pass. And as we go, if I see any naps, I'll just recomb them out so that they end up behind the comb and not in the fiber. There is a little bit of dirt in there, so I'm just going to take that out. On my last pass, I will often go back in and just take out anything that looks questionable so that it ends up hooked behind this comb and not in the fiber. So there we go, last pass. You can see it's pretty clean. Just some naps in there and a few little dirty bits. All right, we're getting down to the bottom now. So you don't want to pull all the way because there's going to be stuff behind this comb that you don't want in it. This is actually pretty clean. But I never go all the way to the comb, the base of the comb. All right. So here's our clean fiber. This is what came out of it. So you can see we got maybe it's not even half. But we can recomb this, we can card this, we can felt with this. Like this is still usable or use it as stuffing if you want. It's just those aren't our firsts, which is when we're combing, we want all of our firsts. Okay, coffee. I'm going to just take our drop spindle just gonna drop that out a little more sorry our hand spindle this is a top whirl and I always find that the top whirls are easier for spinning your own, your own leader So, we have it tangled on the hook. We've got this much of a leader, so we're going to take it down under the whirl and wrap it around. Not quite enough. I've got to spin a little bit more. So, drop that out, and then I'll add the twist. I'm spinning away from me. Always keep track of which way you're spinning. So I'm spinning counterclockwise. Take it down. Wrap it around. Come back up. And half hitch. So now we're ready to catch our roving. There we go. doing good this morning now this is why I like to spin sitting with the spindle between my legs so if I have to suddenly park I can just catch it between my knees oh there's Bobo kitties I think Bobo's the real star of this channel Spinning up really nice and fine. All right, so now I got enough twist in there. I'm just going to butterfly my way to the spindle, wrap that on. There, you can see I hit my groove there. Then half hitch on the hook again and spin some more.
And you can work sideways off your spindle so you're not always holding your shoulder up, which I have a bad shoulder, so doing that is not good. But you just draft across in front instead of lifting this way. And then your twist is held here where it goes over your hand. adding some extra twist to that then we will butterfly to our spindle and hook wrap it around and then up and oh I'm having a hard time doing my half hitch there we go half hitch spin again Oh, here comes Bobo. He's on the hunt. I think he lost his smacky under the cabinet. You know, this fleece is amazing to spin with a hand spindle. It just drafts like butter and it wants to spin nice and fine. So if you want to spindle a fleece as opposed to wheel spin, I would highly recommend this. It's got enough tooth to hold together as you're spinning. It'll spin relatively fine because I always spin so thick on a hand spindle. Unless I'm using my Russian support spindle, which is exactly what they were designed to do is spin super fine. So you can see when you draft, how it makes such a beautiful drafting triangle. Then you just slide your hand up and let that twist enter. The spindle's spinning much better now that it's got a little bit of weight on it. All right. We'll let that add a little bit of twist. And then we'll just butterfly up. Wind it on. I never make tidy cops. I know people who have like the most brilliant cops and they're beautiful. That's not me. Oh, here comes a latte. Hey, buddy. What's up? Hey, what's up? Oh, and here comes Jealous Bobo. He wants his pets too. Hey, baby. All right, get back to adding twist. I'm going to add the last of it here. Last little bit. All right, I'm going to add some more twist to that. And then I'm going to do a plying bracelet. Look how lovely that turned out. I mean, it's not terribly even because I'm a sucky hand spindler. If I practiced more, I'm sure I'd get better. But you know me, I love a rustic yarn. Something that looks hand spun. You can make a lazy cape for your hand spindles just with a shoe box. Punch holes in either side and just hang it in the middle. But, I mean, for this little bit, I'm not going to worry about it. All right. And we'll pop that off the end. Then we'll grab our two ends. Oops. Okay. And we'll knot them together. And then I always like, when I'm plying, I always like to put the shaft between the two strands, push it up under the whirl, and then come up and over and half hitch. Okay, so we spun it this way, so we're going to apply it that way. I do such a wobbly flick with my left hand. It's kind of sad. 
But you know what? Once this spindle gets some weight on it, it just evens itself out. And it's a really nice spinner, actually. I take back any complaints I made. Then we get to the end. Slide the shaft out. Tie a couple knots around. For this little bit, I am not bothering with figure eight ties. I'm just tying it around. And there we go. A perfectly imperfect little sample skein. This is so soft and squishy. It's beautiful. So that was our simmered fiber, and as you can see, it came out gorgeous, like no issues. This was our washed each individual lock skein. Now, can you see the color difference there? This one is actually a lot whiter because we got all that dirty tips out of there. The fiber wasn't as discolored. So it's a little bit whiter than this simmered bit, but maybe if I'd simmered that longer, who knows? Hmm. All right. So that leaves us with washed in the tray. So that was the double layer. Let me see if I can find the smaller stuff. Okay. There we go. move our seconds over there so grab my comb coffee so here's our combing waste I'll just put that aside Pull too hard. Oops, I should do this over here where you can actually see. So if you just pull straight off, it's gonna like suddenly let go and your roving will break. If you wiggle it, it will gently come off the combs and your roving is less likely to fly apart. I say less likely because I can do anything especially the stupid stuff. Okay. <laughs> I know the theories, but I still manage to outwit them. <laughs> All right, so we're starting to get some little nets, so we'll pull that off. There's our final combing waste. And grab our spindle. Some little nets in the end there so I'm going to pluck those out okay so we just give that a twist tuck it on again give it a twist tuck it on again and now we're going to start I have a habit of bunching the fiber up in my hand and that's how my ends of my roving end up mangled so I have to focus on letting it just lie in my hand drop spindle okay get this spin in fluff out this tip I'm just letting that spin build up below my little finger so when I'm ready I can just let the twist in and it will join my fibers and I can continue spinning. All right, let's see if I can do a plying bracelet on the other hand. Okay. 
I like to teach myself how to work with both hands as much as I can. I mean, I'm always going to favor my right because I am right-handed, but there's no reason why I can't teach myself to do things with my left as well, which is why I can support spindle with my left or my right. I worked in a donut bakery, Tim Hortons, of course, Canadian, for um, a year. And it's a very physically demanding job. Back when I did it, we did it from scratch. So this hand has been damaged, all the muscles and tendons and stuff. It's not um, carpal tunnel, it's something else entirely. But it's left that hand very weak. And there are times when I can't use it at all, I have to just wear my brace and wait for it to heal. So when that started happening, that led me to, I gotta learn how to do things with the other hand. And like I said, I'm never gonna be as good with my left as I am with my right, because I am right-handed, but I can teach myself to do the basics with my left. All right, so I've got those two ends tied together stick the shaft through that bring it up half hitch and we want to spin this way now see how much better I can flick with my right though <laughs> there is something very satisfying about using hand spindles I don't know what it is but they do have a place and they do have their fan base of people who do nothing but spin on hand spindles and I so admire that because I just don't have the patience long term to use a hand spindle. But I do enjoy using them once in a while for smaller projects. I love using them for sampling. Now, maybe if I used it more, I would get faster and it wouldn't take me as long to do a project, which is entirely possible. All right, now we'll just skein that off on our body naughty. And so this is the stuff that was soaked in the trays in a more traditional washing method. But look at how that spun up. It's gorgeous. All right. So this was soaked in trays. This was simmered. And this was washed lock by lock. Now, I don't know if it's going to show up at camera, but... This one is definitely the whitest. These two are more cream in color because of that dirt on the tips that stained the fleece. So, depending on how much time you have, how pretty you want your fleece, all that stuff, you can use any of these methods to clean your locks. I tried them all and now I'm exhausted. <laughs> <laughs> so let's wrap this up so i hope you enjoyed this new adventure with dill if you did do stuff down below because i do stuff like this all the time thanks for joining me guys i'll see you in the next video bye